Hang on. And we've met um, Taggart before in a previous message, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Where he was, uh, him and Mackie were speaking with James there. Old... And they were both in dark condition and they both tried the experiment that, that James Paget suggested it to them to try. Yes, which was, if there is a God and he loves me and it's dependent upon my will, then I'm going to will that I receive some of that love. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and this is about, a, not even a month later, it's mm. a couple of weeks later. Okay. So, Mr. Taggart tells Mr. Harvey that you told him that the way to get out of this condition of darkness and unhappiness is to pray to God for his love to enter into their hearts and believe that it will that if he will only be willing to have it come to, into their hearts, it will, but that he has not yet been able to believe. So Taggart himself hasn't been able to believe it, but he's, he's now even helping another person <laughs> to understand divine truth without him personally even believing it at this point. <laughs> Which I love the, the, um, the flip really that exactly. Taggart's done in this couple of weeks. His last time we heard from him, he was saying, look, I don't believe it. And now he's still saying, look, it hasn't worked yet, but I'm going to help you out because I think maybe it could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Mr. Harvey says that when he was on earth, he was a strict Catholic and that he often prayed something like that and attended to his duties. And even when he made his will, he left some money for the priest to pray him out of purgatory. But all their prayers together have not helped him. And he won't believe that there is any God to whom a person can pray and from whom he can get relief. So that when you talk that way to Taggart, you were merely trying to mislead him as the priest did to him. Yeah, now this is, uh, I feel, something that is a, a easy demonstration, isn't it, of yeah. what it's like for many Christians who pass over into the spirit world. Many times they pass over into the spirit world and because the love part of the teachings of Christianity haven't touched their heart, they pass into the spirit world into a dark location they then feel the pain of that location and then they feel that everything they've been told has been false. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, then they are very unwilling to listen to any more teachings that are based around those same principles that they've been told. Not understanding that the reason why they are in a dark location has got nothing to do with the belief systems, but everything to do with their heart based soul condition about love. You know, yeah. how, whether they have personally reflected love on the earth or not. And, and here Harvey is demonstrating how a person who is a believer on earth can turn into a non-believer in the spirit world. Absolutely. And I have a lot of compassion for him, actually, in that he feels like I've done everything I should do. And, and because this love thing hasn't really moved him, now he's in a place of less faith and more hopelessness. Mm. And, and that's the damaging thing, isn't it, when mm -hmm. religious religious practice on earth doesn't move our hearts mm. towards love. And not only that, it's also when religious practice on earth is based around um, principles and processes that are completely out of harmony with love and truth in the first place. Yeah. When you base principles around those two particular things, then by the, when you pass, not only do you have to unlearn it all, but you also have all this terrible mistrust of any, learning anything new because the old thing that you thought you had dedicated your life to had no benefit to you. Yeah, mm. yeah. And this idea of praying to get out of purgatory is really putting a price tag on your soul mm -hmm. in a very basic, it, it, that's yeah. really what is, and that's been a common practice, hasn't it, um, in Catholicism? Well, that, that's why he many, left many money years. in his will for the priests to pray him out of purgatory. And this is, a, unfortunately, what some things that the Catholic Church is renowned for doing, mm. and that is, you know, using the pain of people in order to gain more financial assistance for itself. Or the fear, isn't it? Yeah, it's the eventually fear. the fear, but yeah. it's, in the end it is the pain of people that, that causes their fear as well. Yeah. So it, it's, the, it, it's the using of people in order to grow an organisation and this is very much out of harmony with love, but it also causes huge amounts of damage to those people when they pass because they have such a lack of trust mm. in anything coming to them then that even remotely sounds familiar yeah. to what they've been taught on earth. And that's the unfortunate uh, f situation that Harvey finds himself in. Yeah. 
But Mr. Taggart says, George, you are wrong here. For our friend does not merely say pray, but he prays with us and for us and seems to believe with all his heart that there is a God and that he will answer prayer. So I'm not so certain that there is not a God and one who answers prayers. I am going to pray and believe myself and I advise you to do likewise. <laughs> and again here I was moved by Taggart's impression of his friend Paget. He says he doesn't just say pray, but he prays with us and for us. And he notices that Paget has a feeling, mm, yeah. not just these words as the priest just, you know, rumble off the words yeah. without any heart in it. And instead of doing that, he has feelings. He's not rumbling off the words with no heart. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, Mr. Harvey says, Taggart, it's all nonsense. And if that is the only way we can get out of this condition, we will never be any better than we are now, than we now are. So you need not tell me of God and prayer. <laughs> yeah, in other words, his old belief systems are continuing to affect his, his faith in whether true prayer can assist him. So what he's learned is he's learnt rote prayer. Mm -hmm. He's learnt prayer that doesn't go any higher than a person's mind. And as a result of that, it had no effect on his life and no effect on his current condition. And, and then when he's told to pray again, of course, he believes it's going to have exactly the same effect, none whatsoever. Yeah. Mr. Taggart says, George, I have seen the effect of this prayer on some spirits, and I know that they have been made more beautiful and happy. And even Mackie is commencing to say that he sees light ahead and has felt some strange influences come into his heart as he said a prayer which he promised our friend to say. Now, what is the use in your being pig-headed and say that there is no God when you don't know anything about it? And that's, isn't that great? Like he's just saying to his friend, you're just being pig-headed now. Yeah. I love how straight he is here. Yeah. I tell you though, there must be something in this belief or I would not see so many happy spirits around us. Be a man who can keep his mind open to what he sees and the reasons, therefore, that may come to you. Let us not become hard-headed in this matter. As you were so easy to believe on earth what your priest told you about purgatory and the hills and the necessity for you to pay for prayers to get, help you get out of purgatory, why can't you try to believe a little when the same thing is told you without having you ha your having to pay for it? logical Good argument. Point, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to try my best to believe. Uh, sorry, I am going to try my best to believe. And if you know what's best for you, you will follow suit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very good point, isn't it? Like quite often, unfortunately, a person's previous experience dictates their current experience. What we often find this in our seminars. Yeah. So, so people have been ripped raw of money in their day to day life with regard to religion. Many of the people that meet us for the first time have paid tens of thousands of dollars to so-called gurus and, and to their religion and all sorts of things to, to learn truth. And then when they come along for free mm -hmm. to listen to one of our seminars, they get all complicated about it because, because of their previous experiences. Yeah. They don't consider, well, no, actually these people are just telling us to give something a go and they're telling us for free. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't I give it a go? Yeah. you know, in comparison to, I've had to pay for it before. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, there's, there's so it's, many correlations here of what happens in day-to-day -day life. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. Mr. Harvey says, Taggart, what's the use of being fooled twice? Once is enough for me. And again, isn't that how a lot of us feel? Mm. I put my heart on the line for something, it didn't work out, and I'd never want to face that feeling again. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Priests are here with me and suffering more than I am. And when I ask them, why don't they pray themselves out of purgatory? They say, to hell with prayer. Now, how am I to believe anything that is told to me about prayer or God? Mm. And this is an interesting statement about many priests on the earth in that much of their prayer is not heartfelt. It's a, it's a mumble of jargon words said to a God that they don't necessarily feel or believe in in many cases, but they hope that their so-called acts of piety rather than their feelings of piety will lead them into a certain condition. 
But when they pass to the spirit world, of course, they realize it didn't lead them into that condition. And so they say to hell with prayer because they believe that's the only kind of prayer your person can say. Here, here Harvey is being illustrated to him this concept that prayer is more than that. Prayer is, is about heartfelt feelings. It's about what you desire, what you will. Not, it's not about what you say, you know, or what, how you act. It's about what you really truly feel in your heart. And this is where the difference, the main difference that he, Harvey, at this point in time, does not understand. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Taggart says, George, let your priests and their sufferings and their cursings pass out of your mind and listen to me for a moment. <laughs> When I came over, I was in great darkness and despair and believed that there was no possible help for me that, and that I must remain in the condition of darkness that I found myself in. But one day I was called to meet our friend by his father. And when I came where he was, I found that Mackie was there also. And then we exchanged greetings and wished each other happiness. But I found that there was no happiness for me. And I told our friend that I was anything but happy. And he said, believe in God's love and you will soon be. And I said, who is God and what is his love? And then he explained to Mackie what that love is. And I heard it all. And then I tackled him and told him that God was a myth and a prayer was nothing but the wish of a man that went no higher than his mind. But he would not agree with me. And we had an argument right there and then. And I tell you that while he did not convince me that there was a God or any efficacy in prayer, Yet it made me think and wonder if I could be wrong and he could be right. And before I left him, not only Mackie, but myself promised that we would try an experiment in the nature of prayer and we have been doing it many times since. And I tell you that while I'm not yet convinced that there is a God or that prayer to him will take us out of our awful conditions of suffering and darkness, yet I have felt many strange sensations and at times some little feeling of happiness, which I have never felt before. 